Okay, I'm going to show you um, about making a mop bucket, okay? So here's your mop bucket. Now, a lot of mop buckets have what's called a wave break. That's this uh, partition here in the center of the bucket. Uh, that's basically going to keep water from splashing around as you transport the bucket. Not all of our buckets will have the wave break. But what we're going to do is we're going to fill the mop bucket up. We want at least two gallons of water in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this filled up and um, I'll, I'll give you a little more information about it. Um, I want you to see how these mops are stored. Um, some of our um, janitor's closets have this system right here where they hang on the wall and see how the, the mop here is allowed to air dry. And you can see this mop head is actually completely dry and by hanging it like this we're able to keep it from uh, becoming sour. Now, for those of you who don't have the luxury of that kind of hanging system, you'll be required to, um, after getting done mopping, you will take, you will uh, wring out your mop, and I always twist it a couple times. Um, basically, this is storage mode for a mop. You're going to drape it over the strainer basket like that so that it will dry. Let me show you um, the uh, top clean. Again, top clean is for doing floors. Okay, so kind of like for juvenile, we're going to kind of eyeball an ounce or two in there. Basically, what top clean really does is it allows the water driplets to completely flatten out and then evaporate so that we don't have a floor that has a bunch of water marks as it dries. So, top clean basically just thins water out. So, so that's why we use it as opposed to just using water only. Uh, here and I'm just going to give you a, a quick small demonstration of mopping the floor um, basically starting right here at this doorway here um, so we're going to kind of mix up the solution in here by going up and down with the mop bring the mop out place it in a springer basket twist it once twice keep twisting it until you get it to be like this you want it to be twisted like this so that whenever you wring it out um, and sometimes I'll even if I'm really wanting the it to be a, almost a, a dry damp mop, I'll twist it back the other way. I've got building occupants in here. I want this floor to dry really fast. Plus, I want my mop head, see how it's not even dripping? It's not dripping at all, okay? Just like the rag that we used to wipe with. It's not dripping wet. It's just damp, very light. I can mop for a long, long time if my mop head is very light. If this mop head is full of water, obviously it's going to weigh more. It will wear me out very fast. And in some of our buildings, we've got thousands of square feet that have to be mopped. Um, basically, what we're doing here is we're going to use a figure eight, or uh, it's called deck swabbing. And it's basically a figure eight motion like this, just back and forth, working your way down. Typically, you can get about 200 square feet of mopping completed. Um, before you have to go back to the bucket and rinse out. So when you get to you know your first 100 square feet, it would basically be an area that's about 10 feet wide by 10 feet long, right? That would be 100 square feet. Um, get that area done, you're going to take your mop and you're going to flip it over to the next side, right? Because now I can go another 100 square feet before I have to get back to my bucket. Um, and then when you're mopping, you have to pay attention to things, you know, like maybe there's some coffee right here or something that's stuck to the floor and you're going to have to push down and really kind of work at it to get it off. If, if this method doesn't work, go ahead and take and stand on your mop and put all your weight, most of your weight down on there and that'll really get things loose. Um, so it's more than just mindless going back and forth. You've got to be watching what you're doing and doing it at a, at a decent pace and making sure that it's working. Um, a few things to be thinking about too is you know building occupants in the building. If you come here, you see I put my mop bucket at the beginning of my work in this hallway. Uh, I've got people coming down the stairs. I don't. I want them to see that something is happening here before they get halfway down this hall and slip and fall. Um, so always be mindful of that. If you've got building occupants, you need to be um, aware of that, and you need to communicate with people that hey, I'm, I'd like to be able to get this floor mop. I'm thinking about starting here. Um, if you've got people in the building, you've got to communicate so that no one gets hurt. So we don't want anybody to get hurt because of something that we're in the middle of doing. Um, that's basically it.
for the mopping. Um, other than uh, one thing about the mop water, um, if you don't have a shop sink like this here, a floor sink to pour it down into, um, there are some locations we'll show you where to, to dispose of your mop water at. The, the nice thing about the top clean product we use is it is a green product, which means that if it gets poured outside, um, it's not harmful, um, it biodegrades. So it's not a, there's no chemical issues uh, as far as that's concerned. But in the winter time, you wanna be especially mindful of where the mop water is being dumped out because you don't wanna be creating a huge path, patch of ice um, outside a back door or something where somebody would actually slip and fall in frozen mop water that you know froze overnight. Um, so again, basically, you know, you've got some storage options here. We wanna see the mop being hung like this so that it doesn't sour. If the mop head sours, you're not, you know, it's gonna stink really bad. Everywhere you mop, the floor will stink. Um, the janitor's closet will stink. You know, we go into a lot of mop closets and we see mops that are just thrown into a bucket like this. We pull it out of there and it's just absolutely nasty. Um, or we'll find mops shoved down in the bottom of a sink like this. All that's wrong. It needs to be made such that it can air dry properly and be ready for the next use. The mop head, just like your dust mop head, during your pay week, which basically means twice a month, these mop heads are gonna get changed, okay? So we're gonna change them out and um, just keep that in mind. It's always during pay week that you're gonna wanna change your mop head.